All right, Shalom, Shalom, Mr. Brother Ash Aiba coming back in the spirit, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, and a mighty Shalom to the hopeful elect. So I'm going to do this lesson, more than likely going to be entitled, Without Spiritual Discipline, You're Not Going to Make It in These Times. And I'm sure y'all brothers understand the climate of the economy. Whether brothers want to believe it or not, the economy is collapsing. Now, it may not be collapsing as quickly as we thought, but these things is here. And as inflation continues to rise, as unemployment continues to rise, as the Lord's judgment continues to be brought upon America and the vast majority of the Western world and the entire earth just in general, only those who are spiritually disciplined are going to be able to make it. Y'all brothers can see this right here. You see the article that says, unrelating inflation, taking a toll, leaving more Americans living paycheck to paycheck. You know, these other videos right here. Nearly 70% of Americans seek extra work to offset inflation, how the U.S. made inflation worse. Y'all brothers understand that the monetary system is built off of what? Debt. So the less value the fiat currency has, the more control and the more power the powers that be have. I mean, I seen an article earlier today about how Turkey's inflation rate increased 83%. And eventually that's going to come on America when the time has come. And one thing that y'all brothers starting to notice with inflation, when you go into the store, you have to forcibly stop yourself from going and going through every aisle getting 10 items. You know, when you was a kid, bro, and you brothers had money on your day, you would go through every line. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. You look at the damn cart. You got 100 things in there, right? But now I guarantee you got 20 things. It's already $100. I guarantee you when y'all brothers in your car and you see, you know, in and out, y'all brothers see Arby's, y'all brothers see... I don't know, uh, five guys, you starting to hesitate about going there. When y'all brothers getting your meals, you starting to look like, okay, I can't get everything extra large, bro. I'm going to have to ration it out. And you're starting to have discipline when it comes to making your decisions. This video is actually inspired by a video I was going to do yesterday in regards to me seeing some on Twitter. There was a dude trolling and he had a car note that was around $2,000, a little crazy term that wasn't a real term, but... It, it had people in the comments saying like bro like you made a horrible decision and you understand that most americans when it comes to their financial decisions being that they live off of everything off debt off of mirages they live off the lasciviousness of their flesh instead of being patient waiting saving money and waiting for the right deal they think i'm gonna get it on credit i'm gonna buy it on credit well bro when inflation is up when interest rates is up when the when the cost of goods is skyrocketing you can't make decisions like that. And the people who make decisions like that are going to be the ones to take the MOTB, bro. That's why you brothers have to understand that when you look at this 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 movie that we're in, when you look at Yahweh's movie, you kind of got to relate it almost to going to the military. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying that is because the Lord is building up a spiritual army, right? Let's actually go to Deuteronomy real quick. This is Deuteronomy 20 and 1. It says, when you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses, chariots, a people more than you, be not afraid of them, for Yahweh thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you come near into battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. And this is speaking of ancient Israel being gathered up for the battle that was to come around the enemies all around them. Well, what do we have now? We got a spiritual tabernacle, brothers and sisters being raised up across the four corners of the earth. We see the enemies girding up. We see the enemies with their drones, their turrets, all type of different, you know, things that are related to this beast system. And the Most High is showing you this is who your enemy is, right? And we're getting near into battle. What's that battle? Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, right? And the priest, who's the priest? Yahweh Shai is approaching and speaking unto the people through the spirit. Verse 3 says, And shall say unto you, Hero Israel, you approach this day into battle against your enemies. Let your hearts faint, let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. For Yahweh, thy God, is with thee that goeth with you to fight against your enemies to save you. And that's the key right there. You know, us being at the bottom for so long, you know, a lot of times when it comes to a lot of many Jakes in the world, they lose confidence. When you tell them about the B system, they say, oh, how do you think we're going to change? A yeah, man just going to come out of the sky randomly to save us? Well, yes, because that's that's how the Lord shows faith. When when all odds are against you and you have the discipline and the foresight to have faith that the Heavenly Father is going to take care of you, that truly shows how little fear you have. Because, again, when you used to go into an army, what would happen, right? They would send you to what? Boot camp. And what did boot camp do? Boot camp whooped your ass. They 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 broke you all the way down 
so they could build you all the way up so that way when you went and you had that test on the battlefield you were prepared for anything you got soldiers willing to risk their lives soldiers willing to sacrifice themselves for the greater good of the army and so that may be the case for many of y'all brothers man many of y'all brothers may have to sacrifice your life for the greater good of your how about shim shot and the fulfillment of the prophecy that's going to come through the nation of israel bro but ultimately the lord is girding up many spiritual soldiers and you brothers being as men you have to gain that discipline because in the army they make sure your discipline was on 10 when you have a spiritual army he makes sure that your discipline is on 10 so that way you can be prepared for all the things that are going to come upon the earth i want to get this in the book of us uh, rock real quick this is the book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 17. It says, For the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is Yahweh's portion, whom being his firstborn, he nourishes with discipline, and giving him the light of his love does not forsake him. So us being the Lord's portion, he nourishes us, he, he builds us up through discipline man and what does that come from it comes from the law statutes and commandments because when you start to have parameters when you start to have boundaries around how you're supposed to live your life it forces you to make decisions based off of knowledge and wisdom compared to based off of the emotions in the moment when a brother want to hit you up and say yo bro you trying to chill friday night you have to sit back and think nah that's the lord's day i can't do that when a woman with big breast seeds and a huge uh cool load come to you bro and you can tell she got a ring on her finger but she tempting you you got to sit back and have the discipline to deny her to not make that move you see what i'm saying so when you understand that you get disciplined through following the most high law statutes and commandments and keeping them on your mind day and night it's essentially kind of like boot camp because you're learning how to make proper decisions and disciplining yourself from living like the people around you from living like the heathen from living like the uncircumcised of our nation because most of the people of our nation most jakes is uncircumcised through the spirit but the lord has a, ju a judgment for them let's actually get that this is jeremiah 9 and 25 it says behold the days come saith the how that i will punish all of them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised egypt judah edom children of ammon the moabites and all that are of the utmost corners that dwelleth in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the houses of israel are uncircumcised in the heart so you have to understand the lord is going to punish anybody who's uncircumcised in the heart yes many jakes are circumcised through the flesh but when it comes down to are you circumcised through your mind are you truly you know circumcised to the covenant of your how about i was shot in your mind if you're not the lord is gonna kill you and allow all type of judgment to come on you because he's not gonna take care of you in a famine he's not gonna take care of you in the plagues but only those that he nourished with discipline who allow themselves to become circumcised through the mind is he's gonna take care of and many people lack discipline because this society has programmed us for so long that you can get anything at the touch of a button where does that come from let's get this this is revelation 18 and 7 it says how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously and that deliciously is the key right there let's let's look that look up that word real quick deliciously to be wanton to live luxuriously and that's how the western world was for so long we could go to a store down the street and get whatever we want we could order on doordash and get whatever we want on amazon get whatever we want man them days is coming the day is coming where many of those things is not going to be available to us dog and you have to be able to lose to separate yourself from the spirit of america you know i've seen an article professor mctow posted it where he said 40 to 50 percent of families in america are struggling to pay their utility bills you got a lot of people who won't be able to heat their homes and cool their homes due to their lack of discipline because they're so used to having a, the heat on 60 on 63 on 65 bro it might be where you gotta go to sleep and it's 80 dog it may be where you gotta go to sleep and the inside of your house is 50 55 degrees and you gotta be able to endure all things man you gotta be able to have enough discipline to endure all things because things is only gonna get worse man we have a society that's giving us things so cheaply let's actually go to second Ezra and get that this is second Ezra chapter 16 verse 21 it says behold victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that people will think themselves to be in good case and even then shall evils grow upon the earth sword famine and great confusion and the reason why brothers always talk about inflation is because when inflation hits 
many people aren't going to be able to know how to make the property because you can't fight inflation by working harder yes you can do it to a certain extent but when hyperinflation comes by the time you finally earn a raise and build your business up in two three years bro inflation might go up 40 to 50 percent that you're not even going to be able to afford the things that you used to have to do the only way you can really fight inflation until things get bad is by learning how to spend less by learning how to live off of less a lot of people don't know how to live off of less and that's why they're putting themselves in a position you got people with the average new car note 700 800 dollars add it add insurance that's 200 dollars add fuel that's another two three hundred dollars you got people spending fourteen hundred dollars a month on a car dog compared to them sitting back being disciplined getting a good a good car note and learning how to live off of that and that's why it's very imperative for brothers in this time to learn how to love the lord and love what the lord does for you because if you don't have the love of the lord inside of you you're gonna feel validated externally let's get this scripture real quick this is the book of john chapter 14 verse 23 yeah how answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come into him and make our abode with him what does it mean by we will come into him Yahweh and Yahweh Shah will come into a man, not physically, but through their spirit. And one thing that the Lord gives you when he when when he understands that you have come unto him and you truly love the most high, when you truly love his son Yahweh Shai, is that all that external validation you used to live with goes away. I was very guilty of this. I thought I got some type of clout, some type of notoriety based off of the car I had the place that I was living, the things I was doing, showing off on Instagram and Twitter and all this other bullshit, right? When the Lord shows you what he's really doing for you through calling you into this thing and giving you the opportunity to pursue, you know, the things necessary to be a part of the elect, you learn to get the spiritual validation of the heavenly father. Because the vast majority of people on earth are validated according to their materials, to their car, to their, to their status, to the likes on Instagram, the clout on YouTube, the followers on Instagram, that if anybody were to take those things away, if anybody were to take the superficial things of the earth away from, on the earth away from them, they wouldn't know what to do. Why you think niggas get $800 car notes, $1,000 car notes, a house on the hills? Because they're trying to gain that validation from other people instead of getting especially you as a jake getting validation internally through the heavenly father how about you shot because if a person doesn't have validation of the lord they're gonna be like mayweather they're gonna be like lebron they're gonna constantly be chasing things through the flesh that they're gonna be missing that one piece inside of them which the key is the knowledge the wisdom and understanding that's why the scripture in proverbs says you know knowledge and wisdom is better than rubies it is more precious than anything on the earth in regards to money because you have so many people pursuing physical money that they overlook the spiritual money that's going to be needed in these times, bro. That's why it's a true blessing if the Lord is giving you that because you're not going to make these dumbass decisions to buy these things and have all these things and have all these trinkets that you're neglecting the gift that the Most High gave you. Because ultimately the gift of the Spirit is what's going to allow you to overcome these things. I'm going to explain why. Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. This is the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse four it says for into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in a body that is subject unto sin for the holy spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide with unrighteousness comes in and that's another key aspect of following the most high's commandments is because when the most high sees you giving effort to follow and to have discipline by turn he will give you more of his spirit to allow you to be able to have knowledge wisdom and to have the discipline to make the right choices through the spirit right let's go down though to verse 11 because this is key actually i started at verse 10 it says for the ear of jealousy heareth all things and the noise of murmuring is not hid therefore beware of murmuring which is unprofitable and what is murmuring murmuring is complaining murmuring is ah oh, man you know man moses led us out of egypt dog man i mean freaking man bro i mean damn man that's tasteless man and what happened bro what happened to them in egypt bro let's let's actually get it real quick Let's go to the book of first Corinthians chapter 10. The book of first Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll go to verse 10. It's our verse 9. It says, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. And this is speaking of when Israel was in the, the wilderness of the land outside of Egypt, getting led into the promised land. 
the most high heard the murmurs the most high most high heard the complainings and they tempted the lord so the lord allowed hamashiach to come down and destroy them man through the death angels let's read verse 10 it says neither murmur you as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer the israelites who was murmuring and complaining because they didn't know how to be content in that lowly estate the lord allowed them to be killed and destroyed bro verse 11 now all these things happen unto them for in samples and they are written for an admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common in man but yahweh is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it so understanding that the most high is not going to put you in a position if you are of the elect where the temptation around you is going to overcome you where you not having food for a certain amount of time is going to overcome you where you forsake him you not having water for a certain period of time is going to cause you to forsake him you being put in a in a fema camp or prison or in some type of lowly estate dealing with the cold or the heat wherever you at when the tribulation come that's going to force you to forsake the most high the lord is not going to do that but you got to have full faith a lot of people man and it's going to be sad but a lot of people are going to lose faith in those days because they didn't truly prepare themselves they didn't truly gird themselves up that's why brothers say bro this is a lifelong thing this is a blood bond bro you have to literally devote your life meditate day and night because when the lord sees what you've been putting in he will give you the result of what you need to be able to get through things a lot of men are not going to make it in that day because they're going to lose faith let's go to the book of matthew this is the book of matthew chapter 24 verse uh 10 verse 9 it says then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and will kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false rock prophets shall rise and deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved so you have to understand man a lot of people will be offended and betray one another why because they didn't have the discipline to be able to endure those things that are going to come upon the earth man and that's why it's extremely important for brothers to develop a sense of contentness let's go to the book of philippians this is the book of philippians chapter 4 verse 10 it says but i rejoice in the lord greatly that now at the last you care your care of me hath flourished again wherein you are also careful but you lacked opportunity not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Hamashiach with strength in me. And that's key right there, man. And I always liken this unto Joseph, right? Because you know Joseph's life. He grew up with, you know, Jacob, his father and his brothers, you know, and I don't know their state, but I guarantee they probably weren't rich or nothing like that. And then what happened when all the brothers, the other patriarchs, you know, sold Joseph into slavery, he was at the bottom of the bottom. Bro was rotten in the cell and he still had the discipline and the faith to love the Lord when he was at the bottom. So what did the Most High do? He brought him up top. And what did he do in return? He still loved the Lord, even though he was second in command in all the land of Egypt, because he learned how to be abound at the bottom of the bottom, at the top of the top. A lot of brothers is content with the life they live in. A lot of brothers is content to be able to get in their car and drive and buy things and be able to provide for their family. But how many of those same likes of people are going to still have faith when total chaos is coming? When you got to tell your five-year-old daughter, your six-year-old son that you can't put food on the table, hearing them crying. Are you still going to have faith in that day, dog? Are you still going to have the mental discipline, the spiritual discipline to be able to keep pushing because you have faith in the Lord? A lot of people say they have faith, but more often than not, you can't see a man's true faith until everything is going on. You can't see what a man is really made of until pressure the pressure comes and normally what happens when people deal with pressure one or two things happen they fold up they lose faith they lose hope and they stop wanting to do things according to the way that they were trained up and to try to take matters into their own hands a lot of brothers in that day gonna lose faith want to start to eat swine gonna want to start to be cannibalistic when all them curses come upon them like what happened with a lot of our ancient forefathers and foremothers when things got tough what did they start doing eating their kids flesh the same thing gonna happen nowadays there's nothing new under the sun but who but there's another group of people 
when the pressure comes when the fire comes when the fire is brought up top they don't get burned but they get refined through it they learn to have more faith they realize okay look if things are this bad then what's what's at the end there's always gonna be light at the end of the tunnel i'm gonna wait on the lord i'm gonna have patience on the lord i'm gonna sit and i'm gonna be a faithful servant let's go to the book of psalms chapter 37 this is psalms 37 and 7 it says rest in the lord and wait patiently for him fret not yourself because of him who prosper in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass cease from anger and forsake wrath fret not yourself in any wise to do evil for evil doers shall be cut off but those that wait upon you how will they will inherit the earth so you got to rest in the lord and wait patiently for him not just in the in the coming when judgment day comes but whenever you're dealing with your daily tribulation whenever brothers is in a hole whenever brothers you got to be down and out for a certain time man you know i'm in a period right now where i'm i'm having to save and, and, and stack up so i can get something to make my life better i got to be patient all y'all brothers have things like that as well and you got to be willing to have spiritual patience because a lot of people have patience for things in the flesh but they don't have patience to be able to sit back and withstand the tribulation and wait on the promises that Yahweh bestowed upon them dog you gotta have that and in those times when things are, are down and when you don't know what's gonna happen you're going to be able to withstand it because the indignation is going to come upon the entire earth but you got to have this and this is something that a lot of people don't have this is the book of isaiah 11 and 1 there will come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And the spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel, and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. And the key definition is might. A lot of brothers sit here and say they got might behind the camera scene. You know, they go out with their brothers and things like that. But what is your might like in your day to day? What does it mean for might to have strength? And I'm talking about spiritual strength, spiritual valor, because ultimately how would Shai have more might than anybody else, right? But was it because he came guns ablazing like the Terminator, three AKs, three machine guns ready to smite everybody? Did not yet how would Shai tell Peter, uh, put away thy sword, who, who, he who lives with the sword would die by the sword. Think not I can have 12 dozens of my father's uh, legions of angels come and smite the enemy, but then how will prophecy be fulfilled? But Yahweh how did he still have might? Because he had might of the mind. He had might. He had might to control the temptation that was coming upon him in that day when he had to get crucified. When he was on that cross, to not give up, to deal with that, and to keep it going. That's spiritual might. And brothers and sisters who have true spiritual might in these times are going to be able to keep going. Whether you in that prison cell, they cutting off. I don't know. You know, I don't want to make it too, too, too graphic. You might get your hand cut off. You know you're going to get your head cut off. But you might get tortured before then. It might not be all peaches and rainbows. Or you go in there first day. You know, they cut off your head. You good. You in the spiritual world. But you might be getting tortured for 20, 30 days. Brothers in Guantanamo Bay getting tortured, dog. You may be out in the tribulation for six months a year two years a lot of brothers think that the tribulation might be up in a week bro but we don't know how long but we willing to endure till death bro because we got spiritual might to keep going no matter how tired we get but that only takes discipline bro and the reason why you look at it like that is because all these small things that we do on a daily are just leading up to that so when you brothers go out there and you got to sacrifice food, you got to sacrifice and get things that may not be as great as you want them to be, consider it a blessing. Because at that time period, you never know when that time period will come where instead of you looking about getting off brand pop tarts that is two dollars cheaper so you can save money you're looking at a loaf of bread and wondering okay how much of this piece of bread is gonna last me for three four days i only got water that's gonna last me one or two days let me see how i can ration this out for me and my family and you know it's so ironic food and water let's go to the book of isaiah 65 because what did the most high say he would do for his servants in that day this is Isaiah 65, verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Howell, behold, my servant shall eat. But you, let's actually start at verse 12. It says, therefore, will I number you to the sword and you shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I call, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not hear. But you did evil before my eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not. And that all started from the foundation, which was what? The laws, the statutes, commandments, and changing and repenting and becoming a new man through the deeds that Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh told us to live by, right? The Lord will pay us back, but the wicked who couldn't discipline themselves, 
they're not they're gonna get paid back with recompense and with judgment but read verse 13 it says therefore thus said the how will Behold, my servant shall eat, but you shall be hungry. So when you had to learn how to ration your food in that time, when the time where the food came out, but you still have faith, the Lord gonna might, might rain bread from manna, bro. My servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. In the times where you was looking at that water pot, thinking like, damn, how am I going to be able to drink through, through these next couple of days? I don't know where I'm going to get water from. It built up your discipline and it built up your faith that the Lord gave you water. Did not the Most High say he will allow water to come in, in, in deserts, in desert islands and things like that? That comes through building up your faith. It says, Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. My servant shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall vex for vexation of spirit. And you shall leave your name for a curse. Uh, Salak you. You shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For Yahweh shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. So again, when you see you know when you learn to take joy in the struggle of what's going to come and you're learning how to build your discipline up and you're learning how to make these tough choices now it's going to all come back and pay off man you know so lord willing this lesson was edifying i hope y'all brothers got some type of understanding from it may yahweh bashim yahweh be with y'all brothers on daily i want to give our praise to the heavenly father yahweh in the name of his son yahweh until next time it's the brother ash abba signing out